Hello. <laughs> Hello. It's 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 been a while. How are you guys doing? Um, it has been, I think, something like six weeks or seven weeks since I posted um, any video, and that was obviously the last. That was like a room tour type thing of um, when I landed in Dili. Um, as the title suggests. This is going to be the the quite my quite brutal, honest sort of experience and all the tea <laughs> from my experience with gender reassignment surgery. Oh okay, wait, we may as well do one of these, like <laughs> you know, gotta get a thumbnail. <laughs> so everyone fishes to do right. Um so yeah, I have made a list, a chronological list of everything, um, and I'm just gonna run through it. This video probably will be a bit long, I'm sorry, but when has any of my videos been short? I love to ramble. Um, so yes, the, the truth about gender reassignment surgery. Um, I thought I'd keep it, you know, really brutally honest, and I just, that's what I'm sitting here with wet hair and a bun and in sweatpants. Not even wearing a bra for y'all, you know. Good times, good times. <laughs> um, I will be looking down, I'll be looking at my phone quite a bit. Um, <laughs> but essentially what I really want to talk about is how hard surgery was for me. Um, I'd like to outline that throughout this video, everything that I'll be saying is around my experience. It's not around every experience. Um, Obviously, everyone is very different. Everyone has a different immune system. Everybody has a different way of coping with um, sort of not very nice things happening to them, etc. So, um, yes, I'd like to point that out because um, I'm sure I'll be berated with a lot of my surgery was easy breezy and I'm like, I had five weeks of fucking hell, mate. So, um, yeah, let, let's dive in. Um, so, the night before I had surgery, I had to cleanse the bowel and they did this not via an enema or anything which is probably what I would have preferred to be honest with you um they gave me a, a drink and I can't remember what it's called it was essentially like a powder mixed into water and I had four litre bottles um so I had four litres to drink and it was fucking disgusting disgusting and the doctor was like it's yeah, people just think it's juice and just drink it huh you'll be fine and I'm like Excuse me, sir? No, this tastes like shit. So um, it was fucking awful. Um, I'd sort of keep drinking it and it wasn't like, oh, have a sip and that you're okay. It's like, you have to like cup after cup after cup. There's like, a, I would take 10 minutes per cup and it was fucking hell. So I would like, give myself, I would neck it and then give myself 10 minutes because I was, I was throwing up as well. Cause it just tastes like sh fucking nastiness. And, um, and this is a bit gross, so um, skip forward like 10 seconds if you don't want to hear this. But it essentially makes, um, it pushes through your bowels and makes you gush out water. Um, and that's how it cleans you out. You don't ingest it, it just kind of flows straight back out of you. So that's how they cleanse the bowel. Um, prior to surgery, they also clean it out while they, they um, irrigate it or whatever what, during surgery as well. So yeah. It was not fun, it was a horrible experience, and it was just shit. And this was, um, this was nine days after I just had my breast augmentation, so I was like trying to drink, like trying to lift myself up, and it was all, and I couldn't because I had my incisions in my armpits, so I was like, ugh, trying to drink this nasty crap, and then trying to go to the bathroom at the same time, but I was really slow, because like I could barely, you know, I had to like lift myself out of bed using the electronics. It was a fucking, it was an ordeal, it was a fucking ordeal. I woke up the next morning, dehydrated as hell, um, which I'm feeling now, and I'm not sure what my water bottle is. Yeah, bear with me. Ugh. But yes, I woke up dehydrated as hell, and I did not know what to do, because you have to stop drinking water, um, like, at 12 o'clock prior to surgery. And I did, and, you know, I was knocked out for most of it, and then, I wake up dying, you know, it feels like the Sahara Desert in my mouth, but yes, go into surgery, easy breezy, um, I was really scared of going under, 
because I've never had surgery before um, prior to that. Like, you know, I had my BA a couple of days before. Other than that, like, I've never been down under before. But what I quite liked is the, is the feeling of being put to sleep. I mean, that was the bit that I was the most scared of. But it actually feels quite nice. Mainly because the anesthesiologist, I was lying there and he was like stroking my hair and I'm like, oh, it feels nice. And I had my favorite um, surgical tech stroking my arm and he's like, it'll be okay, Mia. You know, you're gonna be fine. Obviously in Hindi, like, um, I only spoke Hindi or Punjabi while I was out there. Um, I didn't really speak much English just because of the fact that it felt weird to be in India speaking English. I don't know why. So I was like, fuck this. Now I'm just going to speak Punjabi or, or Hindi with these people, which was a lot easier because it's a native language and you can, you can sort of, you get more information out of them because although they know English fluently, they know Hindi better to explain whatever's going on. So yeah, it was fun. You know, the doctor was like, oh yes, you know, it's time to meditate. And I was like, okay. Ooh, he's kind of, he's just, you feel this coldness going through your arm and you're like, ooh. And then they put the mask on and you just, boop, you're out. And um, I did have some very like strange, peculiar sort of dream type things. I don't know if it was dreams or I was hearing them. It was weird, like it was pitch black and it was like a dot of like light and I could hear loads of like conversation. It was very peculiar. So I'm assuming it was just I could hear them, but yeah, so I got put under and the surgery was I think 10 hours. I think my surgery was between nine and 10 hours um, because that's when I was. Huh? Yeah, about, I think it was about nine hours. Um, so I woke up and I felt like shit. And I think it's because of the fact that you put out for so long um, and it was awful. Like I felt absolutely awful. Um, and I don't react to anesthesia very well. So I was like throwing up and stuff really easily. And that was, it, it was not fun. Um, but for some reason I was coughing. So basically I went when there was, it was the turn of, um, there was a change of weather in Delhi. So when I got there, it was a bit chilly. Like I was in, I was in a duvet and everything. Um, a chilly for India, it was like 16 degrees and that was cold. Um, but it was cold. It was actually surprisingly cold there. Um, cause 16 degrees over there is different to what it is in the UK, but yeah, I was cold. And, um, because of the change of temperature, every single person was like doing a mild cough and a mild cough to someone who's just had surgery is not the easiest thing in the world. Let me tell you, because I have probably like a six, probably like a 15 centimeter incision from just prior to my navel, like sort of. Imagine sort of here, this is the belly button, I have a scar from here, going all the way up like that, um, sort of um, lower down, like just like under your belly button is, is where the incision is. Like say if you, if you have a bit of weight to you, like where, where your weight ends and then goes into your pubic tract, there, like in that little crease is where the scar is. Um, once it's healed, I will, I will, show you but right now it's still healing so I don't want to show you because it looks a bit gross a little bit grossed out by it myself but when it was initially done it was very sore and when I was coughing it used we use that muscle there like so when you cough you sort of go Ugh. and it it felt like I was ripping the stitches open it was fucking awful it was absolutely horrible but you know there's not much I could have done about it so I was like Ugh. Like trying to like stifle my cough and it wasn't working and the nurses would have to run in and like they would put like their hand like on my stomach and on the incision and just push down as I coughed so it was like put a bit of pressure on it it was okay um yes so after surgery um I was sort of left to it um the surgeon did come in but I was cracked out so I don't know what he said. He may have said something. He may have not said something. I have no idea. He, um, but he he did come in and see me, but then he left. So, and then a nurse stayed in my room with me um, all night to make sure it was okay because I was connected to all sorts of shit. Um, I had like several wires coming out of me. You know, I had my drain. Had the had the catheter. Catheters are horrible. Um, and I had this horrible. Oh god. So it. I had these like. I don't know what they call like sleeves, like it was like a sleeve of like cushion air cushions over my foot, going up to my shit in my knee, and it would um, it would pump up full of air 
at different points and sort of massage the leg. But it wasn't a nice massage, it felt horrible. And um, basically, oh, that I also had like a, a, um, a heartbeat cuff thing and I timed it and every six minutes that would go off and as soon as the, as soon as my legs would go off my arm would then go off so I couldn't sleep and I got really angry so I was like the nurse take these things off she had to call the surgeon at like two o'clock in the morning to say oh can we take these things off Mia and luckily he said yes but fuck me it was horrible um so yeah I had the nurse stay with me all night because I was throwing up and you know it wasn't looking good because nobody apparently like nobody breaks well not a lot of people react really badly so Ugh. Um, so the next day, surgeon comes in and says, oh, you need to pass gas. And I was like, excuse me, hold on, I just, the way they're going in and out of focus. Eh, oh well. Um, you need to pass gas. And I said, okay. <laughs> he said, people usually pass gas within the first 24 to 48 hours. And I was like, oh, great, easy breezy. And they give you a load of medication to make you gassy and like antibiotics and shit and all sorts of stuff. Um... Yeah, at this point, you can't drink, you can't have it, you can't even have a sip of water, you can't have anything, you can't have any food, nothing. So, um, this, it gets a bit gross, so if, you, if you're a bit squeamish or don't like caring anything about um, excrement, skip forward two minutes or so, I don't know, but skip forward a bit, I guess. <laughs> um, by pass gas, what they mean is you need to be able to fart and also pass something they call lectrin. Lectrin is a very, 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 very loose stool. Um, yeah, so you need to be able to pass that um, before sort of you're allowed to do anything. Um, I did not pass gas or lectrin or anything for six days. <laughs> Um, on the fifth day, a uh, surgeon was like, oh, I'm a bit worried, um, nobody takes this long, um, to pass gas, um, and he was a bit worried, and, um, I wasn't doing well. I was lying there, um, I was remotely coherent, but I wasn't doing well. I was just kind of like, because I had to keep my arms straight because of the stupid IVs. So I was just lying there, like, you know, cracked the hell out. And he got worried and he was like, let's do some blood work. And I had like two sets of blood work done and I had, um, I had four bags of blood and I had um, four, four, so I had four, four bags of blood. Is that four blood transfusions? I don't know, I had four bags at different points. And then I also had like two bags of like white blood cells. It looked like, it looked, it looked gross. I don't know what it was. I think it was, it was white blood cells, I'm pretty sure, I think. It was, they told me it was blood, but it was, it was, it was, it was not blood <laughs> in the bag. <laughs> so I was like, what's this plasma looking like shit? So I was like, oh, I don't know. But, um, yeah. So then I had the specialist come in on the 5th. So he was a, um, a gastro specialist. Um, and he was, he was really good, very nice, very friendly, but he poked down on my stomach and it was agony. Um, you know, I, I was in a lot of abdominal pain um, because I was producing so much gas and my stomach was producing so much acid and fuck knows what else it was producing because it didn't look like stomach acid, it looked gross and it felt gross and it tasted gross coming out of me, so I don't know what it was. But my stomach was doing all sorts of shit and my intestines were not functioning and you know, my sigmoid was not functioning, so there was a lot of worry. My vagina was doing great, you know. Um, it was, the vagina was healing fine, the stitches were doing fine, uh, the um, sigmoid graft was doing perfectly. My vagina was perfect. The insides of me were not doing right, um, which was really unfortunate because, you know, it's, it sucks. I had no vaginal pain, none whatsoever. I, literally, I, the only pain I was in was the abdominal pain. It fucking sucked. Um, but I don't know if the abdominal pain sort of like offset the vaginal pain because I was in pain afterwards, so I don't know. Um, uh, I just can't get comfortable. Um, and it is mainly because I'm still really swollen, so I have to like sort of maneuver around a bit in order to be comfortable. Sorry. Um, yes, so gastric man came and was like, oh no, you need to get that stuff out of there. And I was like, excuse me, I've been throwing up already. He's like, yeah, we need to give you a feeding tube. 
if you guys don't know what a feeding tube is, um, in the UK or I assume in America as well, I don't know, all over the world, if you see those adverts for like children's hospitals and stuff where you see ill children and they have a tube going through their nose, that's a feeding tube. So that actually feeds them like baby food through the tube. I had a big version of that fed through my nose, into my, <laughs> through my nose, down my throat, into my stomach and it pumped out all of the shit that was in my stomach. By pumped out, I mean I, um, so every hour a nurse would come and get the end of it and suck out goo and then inject it out sort of thing. Um, so every hour, as you can imagine, I did not sleep. Um, but also, the second someone would touch the wire, the tube even, it would shimmy around in my throat, like in like the base of my throat and make me be sick. So um, every time the nurse would come, she'd touch it and I'd be like Bleh! But I wasn't physically vomiting, unfortunately, which was actually pretty good because it preserved my teeth. Thank the Lord. Um, but it was coming out the tube, so I was like dry heaving and nothing was happening other than the vomit coming through the tube out my nose into a, into a pot. Um, so I had that for 24 hours. Lo and behold, the next day I passed gas and letrin. Um, so that was, it took about a week for that to happen. Um, yeah. And after that, I was still on medications, I was still on IVs. Um, I still wasn't doing 100% okay. Um, you know, there were worries about me having typhoid and all sorts of other stuff. So they had to like, and something else a little bit more serious that I don't want to talk about. So they had to um, do some more blood work and I got some more blood work done and I was only all clear, but it was just, it just showed that um, I had a really shit immune system. I had some complications because of it, but I'm okay. Um, but it also meant that I had two and a half weeks of not eating anything. I literally had two and a half weeks of not eating anything. Um, it sucked. It was, it, it, I wasn't necessarily hungry because I was constantly on like trips and stuff, but it wasn't great. Um, it was good in the sense that I lost so much weight. Um, yeah, I've lost a lot of weight, which is great. I look skinny, it looks good, but you know, I got my boobs and to match my, my frame and I'm like, whoops, I got a Wendy Williams body going on where she's like top heavy and she's a stick. So um, I still can't eat properly uh, for reference. Um, uh, what date are we on? It's the 21st of March as the, at the moment while I'm recording Thursday, 21st of March. Um, and uh, I still can't eat properly. And it's because everything tastes like shit. And I think it's because all the vomiting, all the medication, everything that I was physically doing in India, um, I think it fucked up my taste buds and my throat and everything tastes horrible. Uh, and I mean that quite literally. Um, anybody that knows me knows that I love tea. I drink, I used to drink copious amounts of tea. I love tea. Tea's like my favorite thing in the world. Any type of tea, green tea, oolong, lapsong sushen, whatever the hell that's called. That's an expensive tea. Good tea though, I recommend it. It's the mochi. Um, yeah, so I, I love tea and I can barely get through one cup of tea a day because it tastes disgusting. It literally tastes awful, like it, it's horrible. Um, even with food, some foods are starting to taste okay. It's really weird because it's at the front of my tongue, it tastes okay, and then it goes to the back, like towards the throat and it tastes horrible. So I don't know what's going on. Um, yeah, so, I don't know what's going on with that. So I still wasn't eating in the hospital and such. And then I got to the point of like moving hospitals. Which sounds off topic, but it's not. Um, <laughs> so um, Dr. Kaushik um, evidently has had some great turnover and revenue because he just opened a five story hospital of his own. He, of, I say of his own. He, he owns the hospital he's in at the moment anyway. But um, he opened a brand new hospital. Um, so I was moved there. Um, it's still a, it was at the moment, it's still a bit of a construction site. It's officially opening on the 7th of April. I want to say, um, it's official inauguration is on like the 7th of April. I think, I think I saw that on Facebook. 
<laughs> um, I think the last time I spoke to um, Dr. Cash's wife, I think she said 7th of April. But um, yeah, so I was moved there. It's um, an amazing facility. It's so cool. Um, it was a bit dusty at the time, but it was okay. I had a really nice room and everything. Um, but yeah, when I was there, I started to eat. Um, and I was eating something called dalia. And I don't, I don't know what dalia is, because I always thought dalia is oats, right? Anybody who knows Punjabi or Hindi, that's what I always thought, like dalia is oats. But I don't, what I had did not look like oats. It looked like, like little seeds. It looked like chia seeds, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it looked like chia seeds, but I don't know what it was. So, if anybody knows what Dalia is, let me know, because, because I, it's evidently not fucking oats. It looked like wheat. It looked like wheat seeds that they've, like, cooked down in, like, milk or something. I don't know. It was very peculiar. So, um, that's what I was eating. Good old Dalia. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so I was recovering well when I was in the new hospital. I wasn't as cracked out. You know, I was doing okay. Um... The catheter was removed. That is a burning sensation I can do without. It was horrible. Um, but yeah, I was recovering well. Like I was getting up and moving around my room slowly, going to the bathroom. Being, I was able to shower on my own. And I was okay. But then, Dr. Kaushik springs on me a week before my flight home, one ex exactly one week before my flight home. So I flew home on the 11th of March, Monday, a week prior. So 11 take away seven is too much maths for me. But um, yeah, so I get there and uh, so I'm lying there in bed and he comes in and he's like, oh, so you'll have your revision slash touch up on, um, on Wednesday. And I was like, excuse me, what? And he's like, yeah, I just want to remove some excess skin and just have a little touch up while you're here so you might not need to come back because so initially I thought in a year I'll come back and then you can do whatever you need to do in regards to revisions Dr. Kashik's really good your revisions are free um you just have to pay for like again your medications and anything like that or like the anesthesiologist and whatever so I had to get this revision done on a Wednesday which was Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday four days before I fly out like so the revision was on Wednesday and I fly out on Monday morning or well, afternoon but you know I have to leave the hospital in the morning so I was like, okay. And he said to me that you'll be fine. He's like, you're on a really short flight, so you won't be in that much pain for, for long. Um, and also, you know, it's it's not major, so it's just ex it's just aesthetic, so you should be okay. So you know, I'm a bit I'm a bit shook, but I trust my surgeon wholeheartedly. And if, um, my theory is, if you don't trust your surgeon fully, you should not be there. So um, I understood, and I was like, okay, you know, he's doing it so I, I preserve some money. So great, you know, whatever. So Wednesday comes and I'm ushered back to the old hospital and I get revision surgery and I was out for like two hours and I was that I was back in the old hospital back in the new hospital. It was great. And but I was in a lot of pain up until Sunday. <laughs> so I was in shit tons of pain for like three days, and on the fourth day I was okay. Like okay-ish. Then luckily Monday morning came and I woke up and I was like, okay. I should be okay. It was just stressful because I was like, oh shit, am I gonna am I gonna be okay on the flight? You know, I have to fly home. But I made a very smart choice and I booked my return flight to be on business class because I thought I need to be able to lie down. And business class in Air India, I thought was just, it looked a bit rick like rickety or it looked a bit shit on pictures online, but physically being in it, it was actually really good. Um, the only other thing that I wanted, well, a couple of other things, I guess. Well, I have been home. It's been a bit, it's been a bit tough sort of like readjusting to home life in the sense that, you know, um, I normally, like for the past like five weeks, I've had I met like I've had a bunch of nurses with me. I've had surgical staff with me. Um, people would come and see me like quite regularly, so I'd have quite a lot of company. But I live with my best friend, and we have a house together, and it's a lovely home. I love it here. But unfortunately, she goes to work every day, so I'm sitting here on my own every day. And you know, I I, I talked to my I talked to one of my dear friends who calls me on her lunch break every day, so I have some form of like conversation. But it's still really difficult, you know, 
going from, oh, that really hurt. Oh God, there's blood. Um, I wonder what that means. And then like being like, oh, nurse. Well, like, well to be fair, sister, they're called sisters. Um, I'd be like, sister, what's going on? And she'd be like, oh, it's okay, don't worry about it. It's this or it's this. Or I'll call over one of the surgical staff and I'd be like, what's going on? And they'll tell me immediately what's going on. I can't do that here. I don't have any surgical staff here, so I, don't, I can't be like, oh, what's that pain? What's going on with me? I don't have that ease of mind, uh, peace of mind even. So it, it's been a bit difficult, but um, I try. One of my best friends and my longest standing friends is coming to see me tomorrow. Um, and she is a, a, an ODP, which I have no idea what the fuck that stands for. All I know is she's some sort of medical person and she's in like theater rooms and surgeries and shit. So I'm gonna be like, what's going on? Because I just, I, I haven't had time to go to the GP. I know I can't drive. Um, so it's just sort of like, what am I meant to do with my life? Um, yeah, so, it's, it's been difficult readjusting to home life. Um, I am, like, food-wise as well, it's been really tough. Not necessarily making the food, because, you know, I'm just, I can make it to the kitchen and cook. Um, n not really extravagant meals, but, um, like, you know, I can make an omelette in the evening. Um, but it's also, like, you know, if you don't drink enough water, your stool is not soft enough to be pushed through the cavity of the sigmoid, which means, you know, it's, you'll have pain, um, and you'll be constipated, and you won't pass stool, and it's just, there's so many tiny little things that you have to factor in, like, I had, like, I, be, I had been craving hot dogs in India for, for fucking five weeks, so I, once I had the all clear that I could eat normal food again, I had a hot dog, and it seemed okay, and the next day I had two hot dogs, and it fucked me up completely, like, I did not go to the bathroom for, like, three days, because, the bread was so heavy and starchy and stodgy that it just blocked me up completely, like quite literally blocked me the fuck up. So I had to drink loads of water and stuff and I was like this close to like running to the chemist again some Pepto-Bismol and being like, uh -huh, help. But um, <gasps> mental health. Yes. That's essentially why I didn't record. I was fucked. I was fucked up in India. Um, it was really difficult for me. Every time I've been to India, I, you know, I've been in my home village or, you know, in, in, in the Punjab somewhere or, you know, with my mother. And so I had that sense of familiarity and, you know, I didn't have that. And it was also very, um, how do I put this? I feel most at home in India. India is my motherland, you know, Jay, like Jay Hind, all that fun stuff. But I was in a hospital, so I couldn't enjoy India how I would have normally enjoyed India. Which was really upsetting, so I was upset about that. Because I had like, two days to enjoy India before I had surgery. So I landed on Friday, and because I'd been awake for so long, I fucking went to sleep. Um, the Saturday, Sunday is when I can enjoy physically going out and about in India. But they don't really recommend you go out and about on your own, especially in Delhi. Apparently Delhi is a bit violent in the streets or some shit, so it was a bit scary. Um, but yeah, I, I, didn't, I couldn't do what I wanted to do, so that was not fun. Um, yeah, it sucked. But also after surgery, you feel really isolated. And as much as the staff are fucking amazing, genuinely, I couldn't have gotten through that entire the, the trip without the staff there. Um, one surgical tech in particular who literally was amazing. I called on him, literally he was at my back and call every day. He was amazing. So, Sudarshan, thank you. I love you. Um, <laughs> but, um, and even the nursing staff, like they were there on a day to day and they were brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, I could not have hoped for better care in regards to those aspects. But there's only so much, you know, um, so much you can have in regards to conversation with them and it's because you know they're busy there's a lot of other things they need to do etc etc so it was difficult and a lot of the time i just sat around reading the harry potter books because um while i went to do i took all the harry potter books with me because i've never read them but i love the movies so don't come for me um i wasn't doing well mentally and you know me and my best friend have lived together for it's coming up to two years this year 
and seeing her face every day and you know talking to her every day it you know it even that took its toll like you know I, I couldn't see her all the time so I couldn't like you know talk to her all the time um, I couldn't talk to any of my friends all the time because you know they're working and then by the time they finish work so I was five and a half hours ahead so by the time they finish work it'd be like 11 o'clock in India and I'd been asleep so we'd have minimal conversation and it was just tough you know I didn't have the communication that I would, I'm normally used to and I I work full time so not having any routine and just lying there and just feeling completely useless and not being able to sort of like get help like not get help but like I couldn't help myself I couldn't be like oh yeah oh I just need a pain med and we quickly could go to the cabinet and grab one I couldn't do that so that sucked but you know it is what it is I guess I I got through it um yeah the last thing I want to talk about is Olmec Health, who I got my surgery done with. Um, Olmec Health is owned and ran by Dr. Kaushik, Dr. Narendra Kaushik, and his lovely wife, who is the managing director, I think, of Olmec. Um, Dr. Kaushik is amazing. I trusted him wholeheartedly, um, from, you know, the consultation for my breast augmentation to, you know, the vaginoplasty, everything. like. I, I just kind of went in knowing that I was in amazing hands because he's done so many, he's in 6,000 surgeries and out of the 6,000, there's been two that have failed and that's due to the patient's like anatomy, not due to his technique. And he's he's absolutely brilliant. I absolutely adore him. Um, I will probably go back to him um, for another revision next year. Um, or maybe in a couple of months. I'm not sure. Pro maybe, probably next year. Um, similar time frame to like when I went this year. Um, do you know, just a bit of excess skin trimmed off. Um, or just have a quick, you know, catch up with him and being like, oh, is everything okay? Brilliant. Let me go see India. Um, so yeah, um, he's amazing. His staff are amazing. I completely recommend him. Uh, I get, I'll get a lot of questions about cost. Um, I guess email him. Um, I'll leave a link below for the website and um, you can email them directly from the website and you can get a cost based on um, whatever you need to get done. I personally paid in total, including flights, everything, every single thing, this entire process, like, you know, surgery, breast, everything, cost me 16,000 um, pounds. Well worth every penny, I will say. Um, there's something about waking up every day and looking in the mirror and seeing the correct body. Now I'm just gonna work on the beard as well. You see my electrolysis in this bitch. But um, yeah, this has been, oh, I guarantee you this, this uh, prior to editing, this is gonna be like 40, 50 minute long video. So I need to trim it the fuck down and get it uploaded. So um, y'all next week, any questions, um, feel free to leave them in the comments below or drop me a message on my Instagram or Snapchat. A lot of people have been messaging me on Instagram and Snapchat. I try and get back to everyone as quick as possible, um, but I get messages at strange times in the night, so I assume they're from abroad. So just bear with me while I get back to you. Um, but yeah, anything, any questions, drop me a message um, and I will give you in-depth details around that. Yeah, so stalk my socials, they'll be down below. Um, and I'll see y'all next week. See you later.